In this video, we're going to learn about dynamic binding and polymorphism using the virtual keyword in C++. So the first thing we'll do is make a class to represent students. Then we'll make a derived class to represent medical students. So we'll say class student, and we'll give students a single public member variable, a string name for the student's name. We'll make a constructor to set the name. So we'll say student string name colon name name. So when the constructor is called, we're going to set the name public member variable. Then we'll also make a print member function to print out the student data. And we'll just say void print. And all we'll do is just output the student's name here, followed by an inline. Now we'll make a derived class of student called medical student. And medical students are going to be a special type of student. They're also going to have a speciality in terms of what type of medicine they're going to practice. So we'll say public and string speciality for their speciality in terms of the type of medicine they're going to practice. We'll make a similar constructor to student. We'll say medical student string name string speciality. And then we're going to set their speciality to the speciality that was provided as an argument to the constructor. And then we'll say student name to call the base class constructor to set the student's name. We'll make a similar print function. We're going to override this print function here with our own definition of the print function for medical students. That's also going to output their speciality in addition to their name. So we'll say void print and then we'll output their name followed by a colon and a space followed by their speciality and then an inline. And now we have this class medical student that's a drive class of student. And medical students are basically a special type of student. Now let's imagine we're writing a program that has to work with these different types of student objects. Let's say, for example, we want to generate a report printing information about all students. Let's see how we can go about doing this. So one approach to this problem of having two different types of student object, the base class student and the derived class medical student, would be to maintain two separate arrays or some of the data structure of these objects. So for example, we could say student star students is equal to, and here we have an array of pointers to student objects. And we'll populate this array with some dynamically allocated student objects. So we'll say new student, Kevin, new student, Mary, and new student, and we'll say Colvinder. And then we could work with this data. So for example, we could write a loop that would print out each student in the array. So let's do that. We'll say four int i is equal to zero, i is less than three, i plus plus, and for each student in that array, we're going to call the print member function. Then when we're done, we'd want to free up the memory that's been allocated for each student. So we'd say four int i is equal to zero, i is less than three, i plus plus, and we could say delete students at index i. So this would take care of our regular base class student objects. But we've said that our program is also going to handle medical students. If that's the case, if we want to continue using this approach, we would have to make a separate array for medical students, and then another loop to go through and print out each one of those students, and then another loop to go through and free up the memory that's been allocated for each of those students as well. We could copy and paste this and do the same thing for medical students. So here we're going to say medical students instead. And it's going to be pointers to medical student type objects. Here we'll say new medical student for each object constructor. Then we'll give a different name and a speciality for each medical student. So we'll say Ali specializes in family medicine. And we'll say that Harry specializes in pediatrics, and we'll say that Lisa specializes in radiology. And then from here on out, it's pretty much the same code. 
we could copy this, paste it here, and paste it here. And we have the same logic to go through our array of medical student objects with this loop and print out each one. And we have the same logic here to free up the space for each medical student object as well. And if we save this and run this, we're going to get this printout of each one of our students, the regular base class student objects and the derived class medical student objects. Now, one of the motivations of inheritance was that it was saving us from duplicating code. So with our medical student class here, we don't redefine name inside this class here, even though our medical student class is able to use the name member variable. It inherits that member variable from its base class student. Reducing the need for duplicated code improves the maintainability of our program. And polymorphism is also motivated by reducing code duplication. And that's a problem we've got right here is we're repeating code. This logic to print out each student is the same. It would be really nice if we could just have one array of all of our student objects, one loop to print them out, and one loop to free the dynamically allocated memory. Let's try to do that. So what we'll do is take these calls to the constructor to build each medical student object, and we'll try to put them in this array here of pointers to, as of right now, only our base class student objects. So we're gonna add the medical student objects to this array here. And we'll try to loop through this student array here, this time going up to length six. And again, we're gonna free the dynamically allocated space using this loop here. Now we've drastically reduced the amount of code duplication in our program. We have one array for both types of students. We have one loop to work with both types of students in terms of printing them out and one loop to free the dynamically allocated space for each student. So this here, the ability for us to use this print member function with either student objects or medical student objects is what's called polymorphism. And polymorphism is going to allow us, among other things, to reduce the amount of duplicated code in our program. That's one of the motivations for using it. Now, if we try to run this program as it is right now, we might not get the result we expect. So we'll save this and run it. And we do get a printout of all the students, but notice that the medical students are missing their speciality. What's going on here is what's called static binding or static polymorphism. So the default behavior in C++, when we have a situation like this with an array of pointers to student objects, is that the member function of the base class student is what's going to be called. So not the overridden print member function we define a medical student. Instead, this print member function for the base class student is what's going to be called. And that's the default behavior. And we call that static polymorphism or static binding. Now we can also use dynamic polymorphism or what's called dynamic binding. To do that, we're gonna use the virtual keyword. So here we're gonna say virtual void print. And we could call this a virtual member function. This is going to change the behavior. Now we're going to get dynamic binding or what's called dynamic polymorphism with this member function here. So if we save and run our program now, we get a different behavior here. In the case of our medical student objects, we're now calling the derived classes print member function that overrides the base classes print member function. And this function also outputs the medical student speciality. So that's how we can use the virtual keyword to actually make our member function calls dynamic in the sense that the decision as to which function to call is made at runtime instead of compile time. Now this does come with a small performance cost because our program has to decide at runtime which member function to call. And that does involve doing some work, but we do get the benefits of more dynamic behavior with less code duplication. So that's how we can use the virtual keyword to implement dynamic polymorphism in C++. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.